Very simply, the whole purpose of the United Nations is to reverse the scattering of Babylon and to bring all the nations of the world back together again. When we think about the aims of the United Nations, we generally think about them as peacekeepers trying to create political peace and unity, but the scope of their intentions extends far beyond this. They want to unite the world spiritually too. That's because you can't unite the world politically until it's been united spiritually. We've seen that theme throughout history, but I'll add another layer to that later. Now, the United Nations, as we know, is a successor to the League of Nations that was initiated after World War I in 1919 to promote international cooperation to achieve peace and security. It was during the Second World War on 1st of January 1942 that the name United Nations was first coined by illuminist Franklin D. Roosevelt. Twenty-six nations came together to pledge their commitment to continue fighting against the Axis powers of the day. Three years later, in 1945, as the war was ending, representatives of 50 countries met in San Francisco at the United Nations Conference on International Organization to draw up the United Nations Charter. It was signed on 26th of June 1945 by all member countries and then later by Poland, who became the 51st member state. The UN officially came into existence on 24th of October 1945 and every year on this date it is celebrated as United Nations Day. So what about this charter then? Well, it copied heavily from the original charter drawn up for the League of Nations. This original charter was heavily influenced by Arthur Balfour, who we have met already as the one who handed Israel over to the Rothschilds. Balfour, apart from being British Prime Minister at this time, was a member of a number of occult groups including the Society for Psychic Research, or SPR. Activities for this group included the holding of seances and attempts to communicate with the dead. He was also responsible for initiating a group called the Synthetic Society, whose primary aim was to establish a synthesized one-world religion. He, alone with Frederick Myers, a fellow member of the SPR, created the preamble of all religions. Balfour had such unusual character traits and behaviours that it coined its own term, the Balfour Manor. Amongst those traits was a lust for control and power, an aloof pride and constant restlessness and dissatisfaction. These are all character traits associated with Satan and they hint at his influence and presence with Balfour. In particular, the constant restlessness is unusual and puts us in mind of one of Satan's most famous names, Beelzebub or Balzebub, the Lord of Restless and Unsettled Motion. Harold Begbie wrote about him in his 1920 book, Mirrors of Downing Street, saying, He loves office more than anything this world can offer. Neither in philosophy nor music, literature nor science has he ever been able to find rest for his soul. It is profoundly instructive that a man with a real talent for the noblest of those pursuits which make solitude desirable in retirement and opportunity should be so restless and dissatisfied, even in old age. He loved power more than anything and couldn't find rest. His dabbling in the occult seems to have opened up the door for demonic influence in his life, and it is from this character, Balfour, that we get the first signs of the establishment of a one-world religion within a political organisation, the League of Nations. The United Nations that followed used various elements of the League of Nations as a template, and the nature of those pioneers that followed wasn't much of an improvement on Balfour. The two men who were largely responsible for writing the UN Charter were Alger Hiss and Joseph E. Johnson. Alger Hiss was accused of being a Soviet spy, charged with espionage against the United States and of being a member of the United States Communist Party. At his trial he was found guilty of several counts of perjury and was imprisoned for the same. This was the man who became the first acting Secretary General of the United Nations. Joseph E. Johnson later became secretary of the Bilderberg Group, a secret Masonic society containing persons of influence in the fields of politics, banking, business, the military and media. I've pretty much sidestepped organisations like those, but if you do any research at all into this subject, you'll quickly come across that name. Along with Hiss, Johnson patterned the UN Charter after the Constitution of Russia and the Communist Manifesto. The Communist Manifesto was of course written by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, those whose ideas can be traced back to Plato and the Kabbalah through the Enlightenment and French Revolution. As a result of these connections, the constitution of the USSR is said to be almost identical to the constitution of the UN. The first official Secretary General, in other words the first leader of the United Nations, was a man called Trigvi Lee, 
He was a high-ranking official of Norway's Social Democratic Labour Party, which was an offshoot of the Third Communist International. Dag Hammarskjöld was the second Secretary General, and he was a Swedish socialist who openly pushed communist policies. The third Secretary General, Hugh Thant, was a Marxist. You get the idea. Hugh Thant openly stated, World Federalists hold before us a vision of a unified mankind living in peace under a just world order. The heart of their program, a world under law, is realistic and attainable. This was backed up by most leaders of the day. Winston Churchill said, The creation of an authoritative world order is the ultimate aim to which we must strive. Charles de Gaulle, the French president, said, Nations must unite in a world government or perish.